On the last video, uh, we talked about this sequence, a sub n equals 3n over n plus 2. And we were able to show using the precise definition of a limit that this sequence converged to 3. On this video, I'm going to show you another way to show that this sequence converges, okay, but not necessarily to 3. We're just going to be able to show that this sequence converges. So it's a, not quite as precise as the last method, but it is a, a, a logical and an and a, a easy to follow technique. If all you're interested in is whether the sequence converges and you don't necessarily care what it converges to, this is a technique you can use to prove that, okay? So here's the idea. We uh, look at some sequence values. This particular sequence, we can tell each term is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and closer to three if you plug in successive values of n. So there's two, um, two things we need to show about this sequence in order to prove that it converges. So the first thing we need to show is that a sub n, this sequence is non-decreasing, okay? That's an interesting term, um, almost sounds like it should be increasing, but um, non-decreasing means certainly the next term can't get any smaller, but even if it was the same, if, if the next term was exactly the same, it's not decreasing. Um, but it wouldn't be increasing either. So to show that a sub n is non-decreasing, we need to show that a sub n plus 1, which would be the next term after your nth term, your previous term, that your next term is greater than or equal to the previous term. So how do you show that? Okay, my sequence, let's start here. a sub n is 3n over n plus 2. a sub n plus 1 you just replace your n's with n plus 1. That would be the next term in the sequence. So I replaced both my n's with n plus 1, simplified it. Um, n is positive, so we don't have to worry about multiplying an inequality and, and multiplying by a negative number and switching the sign. So I just multiplied this over here, this over here, foiled it out, and a bunch of stuff drops out. And what it leaves me with is 6 is greater than or equal to 0. The way to interpret that is that's always true, which must mean then that a sub n plus 1 must have been greater than a sub n. So um, we have shown now that a sub n is a non-decreasing sequence. Okay. The second thing we need to show is that a sub n has an upper bound, meaning the terms in the sequence can't get any bigger than some number, okay? Now, in reality, we really, it doesn't matter what upper bound we show a sub n has. We know this particular sequence gets closer and closer to three. Three would be a least upper bound, okay? Um, but really, if a sub n is less than or equal to 3, it must also be less than 4 or 5 or 6. And we could still prove this sequence converges by showing a sub n is less than a whole variety of numbers, 3, 4, 5, 6, any number bigger than 3. We could still prove that this sequence converges. Okay, So if I wanted to prove that this sequence converged to three, I would have to demonstrate that not only is three an upper bound on this sequence, but it's a least upper bound, that it's the smallest number that the sequence can't ever get greater than or equal to. Okay, but so we're not really proving it converges to three, we're just showing that it, this sequence has an upper bound, okay? And the way you do that is we just set our sequence, three n over n plus two less than or equal to three, uh, you can multiply that over there, and this gives me the true inequality that th zero is less than or equal to two. That's true. So that means my sequence has an upper bound of three. Now to put that all together, oops. since a sub n is non-decreasing and has an upper bound, the terms can't oscillate. So think of it this way, okay? If, if you were writing out your sequence terms, right? Here's a sub n. And 
we know there's an upper bound right here. Let's say this is my upper bound of three. And if we know that our sequence terms are non-decreasing, non so they're either getting bigger, possibly staying the same, but never getting smaller, and we know that the sequence values can never get bigger than three, then there's no possible way that these sequence values could go to infinity, which means there's no possible way that the sequence could diverge. Getting back to what I was saying before, not only is three an upper bound, but four would be an upper bound, right? If, if my terms can never get bigger than three, they also can't get bigger than four. And if they can never get bigger than four, there's no way they could get to infinity. So it would be an equally valid proof to show that my sequence had an upper bound of four as opposed to three. And as long as I can show that the sequence is non-decreasing and it has an upper bound of any one of those, either one of those numbers, then it has to be finite, right? It has to converge to some number less than four or less than three, or perhaps three, okay? So it's kind of an interesting way um, to prove that a sequence converges, um, again, not necessarily to any particular number, but just showing that your sequence converges. In the next video, we're going to look at a different kind of sequence called a recursive sequence.